Nothing compares to playing in the SEC. SEC is the best of the best. Oh my goodness! Is she safe? On the banks of the Tennessee River lies Sherry Parker Lee Stadium, and it's the backdrop for SEC opening weekend here between the Old Miss Lady Rebels and the number five team in the country, the Tennessee Lady Volunteers. And welcome into the broadcast booth for everyone on our LCC Network crew today and our leadoff batter, Jill Jelnick. I am Zach Nelson. And Jill, we see these two teams coming into this contest, Tennessee firing on all cylinders early on. Ole Miss trying to find a little bit of rhythm. What do you want to see from these two sides here in this SEC opening weekend? For Tennessee, it's continuing its relentless offense. Lady Vols leading the nation in scoring, averaging over nine runs per game. In order for Ole Miss to stay in the series this weekend, they have to make sure that they are doing smart pitching as well as clean defense. Pitchers need to hit their spots and defenders need to make the plays behind them. And you see as we open up the SEC series and SEC schedule. This is where the two teams ranked in the preseason coaches poll. Tennessee right up there in the two spot. Ole Miss at number 10 out of the 13 teams and Ole Miss will face the Tennessee ace to begin today's contest. Right-hander Ashley Rogers getting the start today. Has a lot of velocity and movement. She pitches in the mid-60s and her go-to pitch that rise ball. She's not afraid to run it up and in but she's very dangerous in the circle because she also mixes in all four quadrants a, on top of that rice ball, a curve, a screw, and comes in with a change to keep hitters off balance. And Rogers, the ace on this staff, of, of a staff that only gives up .56 runs per game. And Rogers will get the ball in the circle to begin SEC play, and we're off in the Southeastern Conference. And here is who Ashley Rogers will face to begin today's contest. And Jill, this is an Ole Miss lineup that is balanced and also a little more veteran. Absolutely, they're hitting right now, doing an excellent job hitting one through nine. That one swung on and missed as Rogers will face number 11, Tate Whitley, to begin today's contest. Whitley back to full strength. Got to see her back in the lineup last weekend in the Ole Miss Classic. Great to see the senior lead off here on opening day in the SEC. That one in for a strike, and Rogers works quickly ahead in the count one and two. Whitley, offensive spark plug for this Ole Miss offense. She has speed, power, also can drop a sneaky bunt at any time. Very versatile athlete. The one two from Rogers is fouled straight back at us. And we'll redo the one two again. You were a leadoff hitter back in your days at East Carolina. What do you want to kind of see from Whitley in that leadoff spot? Right now she's hitting as a slapper. So you'll see her feet cross over one another. Her goal, make contact. Put the ball on the ground somewhere and use her speed to her advantage. Rogers will deal once more, and that is in. Strike three called. Ashley Rogers with her first strikeout of the contest. And now we will see where Tennessee lines up here today. And, and great to see a familiar face back on that second base spot for Tennessee and Lair Bouche. Finally, we saw her in her first game this season back on Wednesday night, and she's in the lineup to begin today. Rogers pitch runs inside, 1-0. Also a very veteran outfield for Karen Weekly and her squad. Riley West out and left. Kiki Malloy with might be an SEC Player of the Year campaign out in center. And then out in right field, they'll also see Katie Taylor, the sophomore. You mentioned the addition of Lair Boutte. She was out for several weeks for the Lady Vols with an injury. Riley West was also out for a considerable amount of time. Coach Weekly very excited to have her outfielders back as well as a lot of speed in the lineup. The 2-0 from Rogers in there for a strike on an off-speed pitch, and it's 2-1. Michaela Alley will step in for Ole Miss. This is her 218th consecutive game started for the Lady Rebels, the senior potent lineup as she pokes that one into left field. 
ranging under it and straight in is the left builder in Riley West for out number two. Excellent job by Ashley Rogers in the circle. The two toughest bats in the lineup, she was able to sit him down. A strikeout by Tate from Tate Whitley and then getting Michaela Alley to pop up there. An excellent start for this fifth year senior in circle. Nine pitches, two outs for Rogers, and now the three hole spot due up for Old Miss. And Savannah Sykes, the transfer from another SEC squad in Georgia a year ago. That one drops in for a strike at 0 1. Sykes started 195 games in her UGA career. Also made an appearance in the Women's College World Series, bringing that veteran presence to Ole Miss. And just another senior on this lineup that we see from head coach Jamie Traxel. You mentioned the addition of Sykes, one of four transfers to the team this year, and she does bring that veteran presence coming off her best season of her career at Georgia. She's great for the Rebels on that hot corner and a huge bat for them in the lineup. 1-1 one, one from Rogers is fouled straight up, and that'll reach the netting behind home plate, and we'll do the 1-2. And, and Jill, it looks like Ashley Rogers throwing a lot of strikes early, trying to get out of this first inning rather quickly for the Lady Balls. Rogers is known for being a, a pitcher that continuously throws strikes and will make you work. Her go-to is that rise ball. She gets a lot of swings and misses off of that, but she also has great movement when she mixes in that off-speed and curve. And one, two is fouled straight back once again. You see Ole Miss, whenever you foul a pitch off straight back, you kind of have that good swing in. They just got to get it down, get it in play. And that's also because it's she's trying to catch up to the timing of the pitch. Hitting is all about timing. And right now it looks as if Sykes is a little behind on the ball. Rogers throwing in that mid-60s. She throws a lot of heat. Sykes needs to make that adjustment in the box. Pitch from Rogers, rise ball upstairs two and two. And and Sykes has started every game since she stepped foot in Oxford, all 21 for the Ole Miss Rebels. And again, Jamie Traxel really, as you mentioned, brought in four of those transfers. Tennessee brings in three impact transfers as well. And that's just 2023 softball. The transfer portal is, is seen clearly across the SEC. Coach Traxel describes Sykes as a gamer, a big player in a big moment. One of the best parts about the team this year is bringing in Savannah Sykes, the transfer from Georgia. And when you have so many freshmen, eight freshmen on this Ole Miss team, it's so important to have those veterans, that leadership in the lineup and also in the field. Rogers 2-2. Two -two. And a nice A-B here from Sykes. And she keeps fouling them off, fouling them off. An excellent at bat. And you're seeing Rogers go all four quadrants. They're a little low in the zone. She pitched a rise ball, her, her super high rise out of the zone earlier that Sykes was able to lay off. So Sykes now seeing a lot of pitches from Rogers with two strikes, has to zone in and protect. A pitch at bat as Rogers tries to get Sykes swinging and again fouls it right back off just left side this time. And this is what you expect from your three hole hitter in Savannah Sykes, a veteran, a big bat hitting 270 right now for Ole Miss. Even with two outs, she knows her goal right now, find a way to get on, whether that's poking something somewhere or hitting something deep. Right now, her goal is to get on and also be on time with Rogers' pitch. And the longer this A-B goes on, it feels like it really advantage <laughs> to Sykes, right? She fouled the first couple off straight back. She'll foul some off right and left. You mentioned that timing on the at-bat. What are you doing for Sykes here with the 10th pitch of the A-B? She's just a tiny bit behind the ball in her timing. When you have a pitcher throwing heat like Ashley Rogers, you can move back a little bit in the box or choke up on the back. The 2-2 two -two is outside, and the count has ran all the way full for Savannah Sykes and Ashley Rogers, and what looked to be a quick inning for Rogers now up to 19 pitches. Big three-two count upcoming. Nobody on here in the first. Rogers pitch. And it's blooped left side and racing to her right is the third baseman in Pooney. Tennessee will grab the bats when you return here to Knoxville. Welcome back into sunny Knoxville, Tennessee. SEC opening weekend upon us. And Ole Miss will send the senior right-handed pitcher, Brooke Vestal, 
to the circle to begin SEC play. And Joe, what do you want to see from 36 in gray today? A lot of spin from the right-hander Brooke Vestal. She pitches in the high 50s, so not a ton of speed, but she has a lot of movement. She throws a rise, curve, and also a change-up to keep hitters off-balanced. Vestal will face Mackenzie Donahue to begin the contest, and Donahue sees a fastball down the pipe in. And Jill, Tennessee, one of the more potent offenses in the country, and right there on deck might be one of the best hitters in the country in Kiki Malloy. The 0 1 from Vestal is blooped left side and an easy grab over at third for Sykes for out number one. And here is how Ole Miss and the Lady Rebels will set up. Left to right, Whitley, Lassiter, and Ray. And then you come around the corner and, and you see Sykes over there at third, Michaela Alley right down there at the shortstop position. Paige Smith over there at first. A fantastic defensive lineup for Ole Miss. And they will face again one of the more potent offenses in the SEC. As Kiki Malloy grounds that one left side. Sykes with play number one and with play number two. Quickly two gone on three pitches. Brooke Vestal doing an excellent job to start this game in the circle. Two of the top hitters. She sits them down for Kiki Malloy. She's able to get Malloy to hit the spot at the end of her bat. That's that movement we're talking about when it comes to Brooke Vestal. Again, she's not a pitcher that's going to throw it by you, but she has a lot of spin. That rise curve also a change up. So look for her to mix those speeds and also those eye levels. Vesta will now face the three-hole spot in Lair Boutte. As that one lined right back up the middle, Vestal fields and fires over to first. Three outs, four pitches. That's exactly what you want if you're all Miss. 0-0 zero, zero after one in Knoxville. Back in Knoxville, a great look there of third year head coach Jamie Traxel. She brings her Ole Miss Lady Rebels up from the state of Mississippi. They, the SIP, they call it, down in Mississippi here in her third season. Again, back to back NCAA regional appearances. Ole Miss getting the second most games won in a season last year for the Lady Rebels. And Jill, I think Jamie Traxel might have found a home in Oxford. As that one comes in, pops straight up. Cuts to Annapolis behind the plate. She'll do way to the third baseman in Pooney for out number one. Coach Traxel mentioned how they haven't had the smoothest preseason as the Ole Miss Rebels would have liked. They're coming off a two-game losing streak, but she's also right, seen a lot of different Rebels. players in a lot of different well, positions because of injuries, because of illnesses, a lot of different lineup changes. But right now, she says they're really excited for the start of the SEC play to see what they have. And Traxel has actually made a trip to the Women's College World Series back in her days at Minnesota. Head coach of the Lady Golden Gophers from 2018 to 2020, and then taking over the reins in Oxford in 2021. A one count from Ashley Rogers to Natalie Ray, and you see the velocity there at 66 for a cool 0 and 2 count. That's exactly where Rogers is tops out at from 67, 66 miles per hour. That rise ball. Don't be surprised though; she often goes to her changeup with two strikes. The 0-2 and right on cue, the changeup comes in and we will redo the no ball and two strike count. Rogers, a two-time All-SEC first team member, again graduated last year, a graduate in kinesiology. Back here for her graduate season on Rocky Top. The 0-2 fouled, kind of been out of the glove and we'll redo the count. Rogers, what she wants to do with that rise ball that you just saw her throw the last two pitches, she wants to expand the zone, especially with two strikes. You're going to see her rise ball. It. She doesn't want to miss, so it's not going to be close in the zone. It's going to be way higher up and in. That one comes in and outside. Kind of one of those giveaway pitches. One ball and two strikes to the cleanup, or the number five spot, excuse me, in Ray, the freshman, coming in batting 385. Rogers with a lot of movement on her pitches. She's always going to have some type of upspin wherever she's trying to locate high or low. 
Pitch is swung on and missed. Strike three, swinging and missing is Ray. Second strikeout of the contest for 14 and Orange. Rogers with the nasty rise ball. Look at the hands of Ray. They're underneath the ball. In order to hit that rise ball, you have to meet it on the same plane as the path of the ball or be disciplined in the box, lay off of it completely. It would be really difficult to sit in the box and watch an Ashley Rogers <laughs> Rise ball come in at you as then she'll bring the heat at 68 by the six hole spot in Kayla Kumoku. Kumoku from the state of Hawaii in her sophomore campaign. Rogers upstairs at one and one. That rise ball is exactly what Ashley Rogers is known for. She does a nice job extending it, either high in the zone or that mid-level rise. As a hitter, you have to be able to lay off of it completely or make that adjustment and meet the plane of the ball. That one pops straight up. Could be a quick inning for Tennessee. Calling off everyone is the third baseman and Zeta Pudi. And a quick inning for Ashley Rogers and the Tennessee defense will come to bat when you return. Back in here on SEC opening weekend, and Karen Weekly leads her Tennessee Lady Vols squad in for her 22nd SEC slate. And Jill hit a big milestone a couple weekends ago over in the USF tournament. Coach Weekly now the second winning as coach in Tennessee athletics with a thousand wins, right behind the one and only the legendary Pat Summit. And it was great getting to, to speak with Karen about her 1,000th win, and, and mentioned just that, that she was in the same class as Pat Summit, and she was like, oh my goodness, I mean, <laughs> you can use me in the same sentence as Pat yeah. Summit, and that's that's awesome for Karen, as, as again, she's at 1,006 career wins, and, and just adding to them as the season goes on. 1-0 is away to Julia Kutsoyanopoulos, the transfer in this season from Arizona. Excuse me, McKenna Gibson steps in. Katsoyanopoulos, normally on this spot of the lineup, <laughs> yes. had me fooled as she bats in the seven spot today. McKenna Gibson steps in. That one is outside at 3-0. Gibson, one of the power bats on this lineup for Tennessee. Dangerous hitter here, McKenna Gibson, right now hitting 396 with four home runs. And Coach Weekly says that she's just a calm and steady personality on this team, great offensively, great in the field as well. She will see the 3-0 from Vestal, and that one called strike at the knees. Gibson's got a little bit of the uh, the dirt sport, as I like to call it, baseball and softball in her background. Her dad actually signed to play with the San Diego Padres, so, so growing up early on with, with dad in the Padres organization, pretty neat for Gibson. You see Vestal. Calling the pitch right there from the circle, the 3-1. And that's the pitch she wanted at the knees once more, and the count runs full to Gibson. Gibson, you mentioned, come in batting 396 on this season. She's one of nine players on this Tennessee roster batting over 300. The full count pitch is swung on and missed off speed. Gets a cutting and missing McKenna Gibson for out number one. Nasty changeup by Brooke Vestal. And unfortunately for McKenna Gibson, unable to stay back, swings right underneath it. Take a look at, at Gibson's hands. They try, she dips with her back shoulder, tries to meet it on the same plane. That's tough to do when that ball was coming in at least 10 miles per hour slower than Vestal's fastball. Big strike out there from Vestal, her first of the afternoon. That one outside to the five hole spot in Riley West. Again, really good to see West. She injured early on in the season, back to full strength last weekend, and she's starting out left today for Karen Weekly's squad. West, a big bat for the Lady Vols, hitting 355, coming into lineup after being out with an injury. Coach Weekly really excited to get her back in the lineup. 
The 1-0 from Vestal runs outside of Chuno, and West has done a fantastic job trying to progress here now in her junior season. Started off back in her freshman campaign, only had one home run, had eight in 2022, and then also upped her RBI output from 11 between freshman and sophomore campaigns. Meeting in the circle between the battery mates and pitching coach for Ole Miss, and, and what are you telling your your pitcher in the in the circle right now if you're uh, if you're Ole Miss pitching coach? Oh, Ole Miss pitch, pitching coach Riker Chasen probably just coming out to talk to Brooke Vestal a little bit, calm her down a little bit. She had the great strikeout of McKenna Gibson just a batter ago. He may see something, a, a mechanic or two that he wants to to fine tune. But now you also see him here talking to the shortstop Alley and third baseman Sykes. Also important to note that Brooke Vestal sometimes calls her own pitches. Actually, a lot of the pitchers on this pitching staff for Ole Miss can or have the green light to call their own pitches. It's something that Coach Chasen and them have a good relationship with. The, the pitching staff feels comfortable, just like you see right there, calling their own game. The 2-0 comes in from Vestal. It's downstairs at 3-0, so now back-to-back counts and back-to-back at-bats and the count runs at three balls and no strikes a hitters count to Riley West it says a lot about the trust that pitching coach Riker Chasen has in his pitching staff and Brooke Vestal letting them be able to call their own pitches in an SEC game that 3-0 is just upstairs and that's a four pitch walk issued to West so a good luck of Riker Chason back behind our starting pitcher, Brooke Vestal, and, and that really, you mentioned a lot of experience coming in for Vestal. Again, she transferred from Oklahoma a season ago. And really just that trust between Chason and Vestal and a lot of this pitching staff is huge for Ole Miss, and especially when they start into the gauntlet of SEC play. This, this is a veteran pitching staff. Just coming into this weekend, they were one of SEC's best Rebels, boasting a 2.94 ERA over the past two seasons. So they have a lot of veteran experience in the circle, whether it's Brooke Vestal or one of their transfers, McKenna Cleather Miss. This is the time for pitching staff to settle in and for Vestal to continue what she's doing. Right now, trying to find that strike zone. That's five balls in a row right there. If you can, if you also at, count Riley West is at bat. She just needs to focus in right now, hit her spots, and that's most likely what Coach Chasen talked to her about. Get back to her mechanics and pitching strikes. She faces a dangerous hitter here in Zaina Pooney as and go another ball in, six straight balls from Brooke Vestal, and not a spot you want to be in down 2-0 to the power bat of Zaina Pooney. Second in the team in home runs last season with 14. Looking for, she's got three home runs here in 2023. 2-0, and it's hit right back up the middle. Vestal's there, fire on the first in time. What a huge play and a double play for, Mc, for Brooke Vestal, excuse me. Two outs, and I believe we're going to check out that play at first. Great reaction from Brooke Vestal in the circle. Huge play, they'll see if they can pick up two outs out of it. Double play, runs the end of the inning. For Previous Texas. play review. Stay here in Knoxville, they will check out the replay and see if the runner over at first in Raleigh West was able to go back. What a heads up play there by the, by the starting pitcher in Brooke Vestal. Vestal gets two on the double play. Ole Miss will grab the bats when you return to Rock and Top. Back to Knoxville, Tennessee, and if you're head coach Karen Weakling, you can throw out six pitchers and have a six deep pitching rotation. That is a nice half to have. For Karen Weekly, Joe. Coach Weekly says the biggest difference from this team a year ago, the pitching depth. 
six pitchers. She can run out there at any time, and she has confidence in them to get the job done. That's why they are the highest, uh, have the highest, lowest, excuse me, ERA in the country. They lead Division I with a .58 ERA. They very rarely give up runs. That's why you see the 13 shutouts also leads Division I as well. Rodgers throws that one in there for a strike at 0-1. You mentioned Ashley Rodgers, probably the clear-cut ace on this staff, but oh yeah, you can bring in one of the most talented freshmen in the country in Carlin Pickens, who we saw through a perfect game last weekend, and then oh yeah, Peyton Gottschall, nine straight strikeouts to start a contest this past weekend. That's what makes this pitching staff so dangerous is the ability to throw out different looks. These pitchers all complement each other, whether it's Rogers going high with the rise ball or Carlin Pickens coming in with her velocity. The pitchers complement each other well. That one fouled back up. And it will be no balls and two strikes. We mentioned Pickens, two-time now reigning SEC Freshman of the Week. And it'll be curious to see where Karen Weekly and her staff kind of send her out this weekend with the SEC schedule starting. And Coach said that's a great problem to have when the your biggest challenge is that you're not sure exactly which pitcher to throw out there because they're all competing so hard and pitching so well. Again, on top of Pickens, you also have Charlie Orsini, new to the staff this year, and also Riley White, another uh, returner from last year. This is a pitching staff with a lot of different looks, and they're playing very well right now. Rogers pitch, rise ball upstairs at one and two. You also mentioned about Orsini, comes over from Australia, was really, saw her first really lengthy outing this past Wednesday against Tennessee Tech, and Karen Weekly's talked about with uh, Orsini, just kind of got lost in the numbers with the talent that is on this step. One, two, is swung on and missed, strike three. And Ashley Rogers bringing her ace stuff here in opening day of the SEC series. Three strikeouts for 14 and Orange here today. Runs that rice ball high and tight. That's tough to get your hands around when it's coming in 66 miles per hour. It's just game one of the three this weekend between Ole Miss and Tennessee as that one is launched out of play at 0-1. Ole Miss will bring up number 31, Lexi Brady, the DH. Sophomore here in her sophomore campa campaign from Carmel, Indiana. Looking for her first hit this season. And upstairs and the count runs even at 1-1. One when you're facing a rise ball pitcher with a lot of velocity like Ashley Rogers, you have to make adjustments in your at bat, whether that's moving back in the box to give yourself some time or up in front to catch that rise. That one runs inside to Brady at two and one. Rogers ball is always going to have that type of upspin you see on, on those rise balls but it's her efficiency and her ability to locate it so well is what makes her such a difficult pitcher to hit. And two one to Brady is fouled off and, and Lexi Brady really nice to see in that DH spot now has started in three straight games for Ole Miss and she has made 12 appearances on the season but again here in another start for the sophomore. Evened up in the count with Ashley Rogers. Pitch number 40 upcoming. And that one is hot. Rogers, Coach Weekly says, great to have her at, at full strength this year. Suffered some health issues last year that sidelined her for the majority of the, the first part of the season. She only pitched 23% of the Lady Vols innings last year, and the majority of those came the back half of the season. Great to see her at full strength in the circle. The 3-2 is ruled outside and for a walk, the first base runner of the evening for Ole Miss, and, and Rogers not happy where that one was. Brady lays off this one inside and tight. You're gonna see this screwball to Brady just one, come Jayla. right at her hands. You could tell by her expression, Rogers didn't like that call, but now Ole Miss with her first base runner of the day. 
Big spot now in the lineup at number nine. Ole Miss will flip the lineup after the nine hole spot and Jayla Lassiter stepping in, the freshman. Three time Alabama State all selection in her collegiate career, or excuse me, in her high school career, now in her collegiate career at Ole Miss. The 01 from Rogers runs inside. That'll get by Cutsoyanopoulos and a free 60 feet for Brady. Rare mis miscue by Cutsoyanopoulos back behind the plate. This one, a lot of spin just gets past, past her glove. And Brady taking advantage, getting the extra 60 feet on the pass ball. Great look there of Julia Cutsoyanopoulos. And you wouldn't really believe it. You see that one go by her, but she has been a steady piece for Karen Weekly and her staff behind the plate. She had never caught before, and now here she is in her first SEC contest. Coach Weekly, when she got Katsoyanopoulos over from Arizona as a transfer, she noticed right away her defensive prowess, just an amazing athlete and also high IQ when it comes to defense. She was in the outfield, but then Coach Weekly knew she needed a whole field behind the plate. She thought Katsoyanopoulos could get it done. The 2-2 from Rogers is fouled straight up and that one will get out of play. And, and Katsoyanopoulos, you see that glove on her right hand. Yeah, she's a left-handed <laughs> catcher as Very well. Very rare. You don't see left-handed catchers in softball. And that's also a big reason why she hadn't played catcher since she was 12 years old. That's why she was in the outfield before and also at first base. But now taking on a completely new position this year at the Division I level. Rogers will see this one. Rise ball runs upstairs. Runnering scoring position for Ole Miss as they look to open up the scoring here between Tennessee and Ole Miss. Got it up at zero early. You haven't missed much if you just joined us. And Ole Miss, you got to give them a lot of credit. Seeing Ashley Rogers again, the ace on this staff, fouling off a lot of pitches that count almost up to 50 here in inning number three. And Ashley Rogers doesn't issue a lot of walks coming into today. Ashley Rogers with only six walks on the season, 52 strikeouts. A great whip right there for the righty. That one lined in juice center field. Malloy is there, tracks that one down. Relay throw will not be in time. And that'll move over the base runner. So now just 60 feet away is Brady to try to open up the scoring for Ole Miss and the lineup flips over. Fantastic play by Kiki Malloy. This one flies off Lassiter's bat. She gets this one high in the zone, is able to barrel it out with a lot of power, but Malloy's speed, she tracks that down, makes the throw right away. She clearly turned to her right shoulder, was able to pedal that way and use continue her speed with that movement. An excellent job by the veteran center fielder. Great job to see Malloy battle where that goes into that track right there before the wall for out number two. A great look there of Malloy. And, oh yeah, she's batting over 500 on the season, but then she'll flash that golden glove out there in center. That's why Coach Weekly calls her one of the most exciting players in all of college base, oh, softball, excuse me. She gets it done in every phase. Jayla Lassiter will step in, and this is back to the top of the lineup for Ole Miss. Lassiter struck out looking back in inning number one. You see that big batting average at 360 looking to break open the scoring for the Rebels. The 1-1 from Rogers is slapped out of play and we'll do the 1-2. Whitley slapping right now as she's in the left-hand side of that box. She can also dig in and, and hit for power. It's her speed, though, that also makes her such a versatile hitter. She can drop a quick bunt right away, slap something somewhere, and with only, right now, two outs, she just wants to make contact. Whitley swings and misses. Strike three, another strikeout for Ashley Rogers. We are through two and a half. We're in nine.
back on a beautiful Friday evening in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we welcome in a 1,000 career winner in head coach Karen Weekly. Karen, thank you for joining us. And wanted to ask you real quick, how important is it to have that clear ace on your staff and Ashley Rogers that you have such a plethora of options on your staff? You know, Ashley's experienced. You know, she's in her fifth year. She's had success throughout her college career. So it's nice to be able to go out there with somebody on Friday night that you have a lot of confidence in and we sure do in Ashley. And coach, your offense still looking for its first hit of the day. What adjustments do you want to see your hitters make in the box? Yeah, we've just got to slow ourselves down. You know, it's first SEC game. Everybody's a little lamped up and then, you know, she's throwing the ball in there about 50 miles an hour. So we've just got to make the adjustment and just take a deep breath and, uh, you know, hit it up the middle. Coach Wakely, thank you so much for your time. We'll let you get back to coaching your team. Thank you. Karen Wickley right there with us again, as we mentioned earlier, hitting that 1,000 career win mark this season. And got to get a good smile there out of, of Coach Wickley. Very pleased as to what she's seen so far with her team ranked number five in the country and 17-1 and and overall. Tennessee will send seven, eight, and nine to the lineup here in inning number three, Joya Kutsoyanopoulos will take over in the seven hole spot today. And we mentioned her being fresh behind the plate, the left-handed catcher, and, and she swings a really good bat, batting 409 on the season. Kutsoyanopoulos making an immediate impact as a transfer to Tennessee. She's also one of those players that has a great mental energy about her. It's because of her high IQ that Coach Weekly considered her behind the plate as a catcher, having never played that position before. But she also says, as an athlete, she just processes everything quicker, whether it's her quick feet or making an adjustment in the box. She's just one of those players with a high mental energy. The pitch from Vestal is low and another count at 3-0. Really good to see Katsoyanopoulos. No stage is too big for her as she played on the Italian national team last couple of seasons. Katsoyanopoulos, as we mentioned, transferring over from Arizona and has been a big bat for Tennessee already here early in the 2023 season. Another 3-0 count upcoming. And that one's in for a strike. What do you want to see from a pitcher in Brooke Vestal? You work so far behind early in the count, then you battle your way back. What does that kind of psyche do for you in the circle? Anytime a pitcher is battling behind an account, it, it makes it difficult because you can't throw the pitches you want. We'll see what Vestal goes with with the 3-1. When a pitcher is able to work ahead, then she's able to go to her go-to pitches. But just like this last pitch, low out of zone, Katsoyanopoulos able to lay off of it and draws the walk. So for Brooke, again, getting ahead in the count, pitching the pitches you want to. And also, I think she needs to gain some confidence back. She had the strikeout of McKenna Gibson earlier in this game, but since then has struggled to find the strike zone. And we could potentially be seeing a pitching change very shortly. Jamie Traxel walks out with pitching coach Riker Chason. And they will discuss that pitching staff. And it looks like they may decide to go to the bullpen. Ole Miss has a couple of righties warming in the pen. You see number 17, Caitlin Riley, out there warming up. She's actually from East Tennessee at Jefferson County High School. but. Looks like Chason just trying to calm down his pitcher. And, and what are you what are you telling Vestal here if you're Chason? Take a deep breath. Slow down the game a little bit, similar to what Coach Weekly is telling her pitchers. There's a lot of excitement right now and a lot of extra energy because this is the first conference game of the entire season. And if you look around the league, uh, all of Division I, a lot of leagues are not playing conference games right now. But because there's so many SEC teams, they have to start conference play a little early. So a lot of juices, a lot of adrenaline. Right now, Brooke Vestal needs to take a deep breath, focus on pitching her game, get back to pitching what she's what she's good at, bouncing around in the quadrants, but also finding that strike zone. And hey, let her defense make the play behind her. The defense right now, Ole Miss ranking first in the SEC in fielding percentage. And oh yeah, she can play a little defense herself after she mm -hmm. flashed the leather an inning ago. She will face the eight-hole spot, Jameson Brockenbro, and that one runs inside. And scary pitch to Brockenbro. Vestal just lets this one get away. 
and it runs high and inside, thankfully off the Evo shield there of Brock and Bro. That's an example of Vestal not being able to get ahead on the count. Again, trying to find the strike zone is, is her, is what she's struggling with right now. And I like the move by her infielders trying to come and talk to her, calm her down a little bit. But Tennessee, give them credit right now, taking advantage. Coach Weekly said they, that her hitters needed to slow down and make adjustments. Well, right now, Tennessee can tell that Vestal is struggling in the circle. They're being patient at the plate and making her pitch strikes. This is a huge point in this game. Really could be the turning point for Tennessee. Nine hole spot comes up in Katie Taylor, who comes in batting 267 on the season. But if you're Vestal, you've got to get it out anywhere you can find it right here for Ole Miss, because Tennessee's gonna flip that lineup over in the next AB. Infield in at the corners for Ole Miss. Taylor squares to bunt, pops it up, and that is a huge out number one for Brooke Vessel and her defense as Smith comes in to make the grab for out one. Huge break for Ole Miss, getting Taylor to pop up. Taylor's hands, look at her hands. They go Not underneath the ball. The that bat needs to be on top of the ball and angled down. A great job by Smith at first base. The corners were in, makes the grab, looks over at first. And that's a crucial first out for this Ole Miss defense. A nice job by Paige Smith coming in, closing the glove for out number one, but back to the top of the order for Tennessee, Mackenzie Donahue, as that one's in for a strike. And that might be that confidence that Vestal needed. You get the first out, you fire in a strike, and it's own one. Getting back to, to her game, what she's used to, finding that strike zone, She's in those those high 50s, so not gonna blow it by you. She has to rely on her movement and location. Kinsey Donahue sees that one in down low. Donahue again, a transfer from Oklahoma. She's got two on here in the third. Tennessee looking to break the scoring open in a deadlock 0-0 contest here on opening day of the SEC slate. The 1-1. One -one. It's upstairs at two and one. Coach Troxel tells us that when Brooke Vestal is at her best, she's coming through the zone. And what that means is she has command over the plate, command over her locations and speeds. We're seeing her bounce the ball around a lot, but she's missing the strike zone more than not. Vestal's pitch bounces in, and now a hitter's count to Donahue at three and one. And Vestal, again, as we've mentioned a couple of times, really that, that veteran presence for Ole Miss. She was on a Women's College World Series championship team over at Oklahoma. Also a three-time All-American in high school, so no stage too big for 36 and gray. Big pitch here on a 3-1 to Donahue. And that one's upstairs. Donahue, Donahue, excuse me, is fired up and the bases are loaded for maybe one of the best players in the country in Kiki Malloy. Vestal misses upstairs. And Donahue draws the walk. This is a pivotal moment in the game right now for these two teams. Tennessee has a chance to bust open this inning and give themselves a big lead. As for Ole Miss, one out right now, bases loaded. They know they can go to any base in, in the infield, first base, second, third, or home. Yes, it would be great if they could avoid the run, throw home, get the force out there, but depending on where the ball is hit and how it comes off the bat, defense needs to react. Again, this is a, a great defense for Ole Miss, one of the highest fielding percentages in the country. Right now they have a .981, ranking 11th nationally. Ole Miss will bring in a new pitcher, number 18, Ansley Furbish. When you return, we'll update you on the new arm for Ole Miss. Back on a Friday night in East Tennessee, and Ole Miss We'll send a new pitcher to the circle with Tennessee having the bases loaded. And Jill Jelnick, what do you see from Ansley Furbish when she toes the rubber?
refurbish a, a right-hander, she's going to be up in the zone with a lot of spin. She'll come at you with a rise, not afraid to run it high and in. Also mixes in a curve, a screw, and a change-up to try to keep hitters off balance. She pitches in the low to mid-60s, so not going to throw it by you, but it's that spin that gets a lot of swing and misses. Herbish with that 1.10 ERA. She'll try to come in and sit Tennessee down quickly, but a tall task. And Kiki Malloy, who has been on fire as of late. You see that graphic there on her last six games. Four long balls and batting 625. One of the most dynamic players in the country because of her speed in center, but also her big bat. Furbish inheriting a bases loaded situation. All Miss though, they've they turn the double play really well. We've already seen one turned so far in this one. They rank number one in the SEC, number six in the country in double plays turn. They need one here. But Malloy blasts that one out to left. Where will this one land? My goodness, Kiki Malloy. Goodbye, it's a grand slam. Malloy. Malloy got all of that one, Jill Gelman. Furbish misses high and inside, and Kiki Malloy makes her pay. She takes her hands right to the ball. Looked like a rise ball that didn't quite rise out of the zone. And that's Malloy doing what she does best. Her power comes off the barrel of that bat. Again, high and inside from Furbish. Malloy makes her pay for the first home run and the first, excuse me, grand slam to kick the scoring off for the Lady Balls. I believe that one cleared the scoreboard out there on left. That one was hit a mile high. A nice A-B from Malloy and Tennessee quickly on top. It's four to nothing. That's a tough situation for Ansley Furbish to come into. Bases loaded with only one out and facing the top hitter in the opposing team. Not an easy situation to come into. But Furbish, now her goal, for have a short-term memory. Forget about that at bat, forget about the grand slam. Not an easy thing to do, but when you're a Division I pitcher at this level and you're in the SEC, you have to have a short-term memory. Forget about that last at bat, focus in on this next hitter. Attack this next hitter in Lair Butte. Furbish has some, some innings pitched in the SEC, she was an All-SEC freshman team member a couple of seasons ago. Just a difficult situation to inherit, but now she sees the bases clear for the three-hole spot in Lair Butte. And a big smile there from Kiki Malloy. Malloy, just an exciting player to watch, whether it's her, her power and her ability to hit a grand slam or run all over the outfield. Just an exciting player in the sport. Malloy with that grand slam actually extended that hitting streak now up to 11. Another big accomplishment, but a grand slam, she'll take it with a 4-0 Tennessee lead. She puts on the hat, excited in that dugout as Boutte sees that one downstairs, and the count runs full to Lair Boutte. Coach Weekly told us in her in-game interview she just felt like her hitters needed to slow down, take a break, make some adjustments for Kiki Malloy is off the new pitcher. That one comes in, and Boutte is scary. Pitch there. For Furbush, that's her 11th hit by pitch of this season. She can lose control sometimes with her, spe specifically her rise ball in there, just hit Boutte right on the helmet. You could hear the bang coming off the Lady Vols helmet. Winkley goes over and checks on Boutte. She's like, yeah, that one got up in on me, but she seems to, to be okay. And the athletic trainer comes in to check her out, and now she realizes. Good to see Boutte off the field. Two in orange, a, a big player for Tennessee who had just gotten back around to being healthy for the Lady Balls. Looks like Coach Weekly will look at a pinch runner for Boutte. And Coach has, has played around with the lineup quite a bit the last few weeks, whether it's getting in some of her freshmen 
10 freshmen on the team with several of them with a lot of speed. But this was this was a tough pitch. I mean, anytime you take a, a pitch to the body, it's it's never fun. But to the helmet, it, it can be a little frightening. Boutte even tries to get out of the way, but it looks like from Furbush, it just goes high and in, inside, cuts her too tight as as Boutte was trying to crowd away, kind of crouch away from the pitch. Boutte back to the dugout, and we will see a pinch runner in for Tennessee. It'll be number six, Jenna Mosley, the freshman. And it looks like we will also see a new pitcher in the circle, number 15, McKenna Cleithermas. Cleithermas, a transfer from Oregon, the University of Oregon here in 2023. And we talked to Jamie Traxel this week, really had mentioned she's back to uh, being, trying to be the best her she can be, trying to get consistent after coming in from Oregon. And, and Joe, what do you see from Cleithermas as she comes into the circle for Ole Miss? Cleithermas, the right-hander, is, is the hardest thrower on this staff. She pitches in the high 60s, has a drop, a curve, a rise, a change, so a lot of different looks. Look for her to change eye levels with that rise and drop, but also keep hitters off balance with that changeup as well. Cleithermas second on the staff in innings pitched at 39 and a third innings so far this season. She'll inherit a runner on over at first in Mosley, and it'll be the cleanup bat in McKenna Gibson due up. Be fell to mention if we don't wish our best, of course, to, to Lair Butte as she heads back into the dugout. Coach Weekly looked like she had a little bit of a smile on her face while she was walking Butte back to the dugout, so hopefully everything is all, is all good with the second baseman. Right now, Tennessee, a runner on trying to extend their lead following Kiki Malloy's uh, grand slam. McKenna Gibson steps in. Tennessee with a 4-0 lead after the Malloy home run. Tennessee only with one hit on the board, but that hit a huge one for the Lady Vols. And credit to Tennessee, they were taking advantage of mistakes, the walks, the hit by pitch, getting runners on and getting them in. Gibson will face the 0-1, and that one is in for a strike. Quickly ahead in the count goes Cleithermas. For Cleithermas coming into this game right now, the third pitcher we've seen today for Ole Miss. Her goal, keep the score where it is. Have minimized the damage, nothing coming out of this inning. I'm going to way to Gibson, kind of a give me pitch, and it goes at one and two. Gibson. Coming into this contest, a couple of big moments already this season. One, she actually had the only RBI in Tennessee's biggest win this season over in the USF tournament against Clemson, a one nothing win. Gibson driving in that only run, and she swings and misses for a strike three. Cleithermas comes in and gets a big strikeout for out number two. Cleather Miss goes high up in the zone and gets Gibson to bit, bite. Look at Gibson's hands, they go right underneath that rice ball. Look at the bat path of her barrel. She needs to be higher in order to meet that rice ball or stay disciplined at the plate, lay off that rice ball completely since it is out of the zone. Gibson was looking to hit that one where Malloy did, comes up empty there. And for out number two, Tennessee, though, is still one on in the inning. Riley West steps in. West was issued a walk back in inning number two for Tennessee. Mosley down at first, the 0-1. Is in for a strike and pounding the strike zone quickly comes McKenna Cleithermas for Ole Miss, trying to get out of this inning with no more damage done. That's a tough position to come into, the second relief pitcher for Ole Miss, but she's done an excellent job throwing strikes since she's stepped into the circle. The 0-2, rise ball upstairs. Cleithrum is not afraid to, to pitch that high rise out of the zone, try to get hitters to bite like she did McKenna Gibson in her strikeout. Coach Traxel says when it comes to Cleithrumis, that she still believes the best is yet to come, still can be more consistent in the circle. That pitch runs outside. And that comes with her getting more comfortable with the Ole Miss system and also building more confidence. She's a grad transfer from Oregon. 
Cleather missed last year, handled the bulk of the workload for the Oregon pitching staff. Had 32 appearances, trying to carry that over to here for Ole Miss. Ellen fouled straight back. She comes in with a four and three overall record so far this season. Giving up 12 runs. She kind of got banged up a little against, against Oklahoma State, Cal State, Fullerton, but really has been able to kind of ride the ship and, and get you a get you a good spot here to open SEC play. The 2-2 two -two is fouled off again. A nice at bat by Riley West. But still Mosley down at first. And when you're in conference play, in a competitive conference like the SEC, this is what you need to expect. A lot of different pitchers that can be thrown at these hitters at any time with different looks. The 2-2 two -two from Cleather Miss is outside. Now Riley West all the way back into the count at 3-2, and two, and Mosley will be off and running with two gone in the inning. If you're just joining us, a big grand slam from Kiki Malloy early on in this inning. Cleather Miss on in relief, trying to get a strikeout here of West. And she continues that AB. We'll look at the ninth pitch of the at-bat upcoming to the Tennessee Junior. That's that rise ball that Cleather Miss is not afraid to throw up and high, especially with two strikes. West needs to make an adjustment, either lay off that rise ball or meet it with the barrel. The pitch is launched deep into center field and a little short ranging in is the center fielder in Laster. Tennessee gets four on the grand slam from Kiki Malloy here in the third. Oh, can you guys hear me? Coach, we can hear you. Can you okay. hear us? Yep. Great. Perfect. Coming to you shortly. Okay. Back on SEC opening weekend, Tennessee out to a 4-0 lead, and we're pleased to be joined by the Ole Miss head coach in Jamie Traxel. And, and Coach Traxel, what do you want to see your hitters do against the ace for Tennessee and Ashley Rogers? Well, they did a good job. You know, uh, you know, this has been a really good pitching staff for Tennessee. They don't walk a lot of people to run the zone, but they still get swings and misses and strikeouts. We like their aggressiveness. They're, they're making it work a little bit, um, same balance. So they've done a good job, and I think they're going to continue to make adjustments the second time through. Coach Cleather Miss coming in, third pitcher for you today. What are you telling your pitching staff right now? We just keep like keep attacking the zone. You know, we talked about this giving up free passes. You know, it's one hit and four runs across the board. So just the free passes and and obviously their best hitter made us pay for it. So we just got to make them earn it a little bit. Um, obviously keeping the ball in the, in the park, but just attacking the zone and not giving up free passes. Coach Traxel, we thank you so much. Best of luck in SEC play. Thank you guys. The head coach for Ole Miss, Jamie Traxel. Pleasant to have her with us here on opening day in SEC softball. Jill and Jelinek, what more could you ask for? A beautiful <laughs> evening, a couple of talks with some head coaches, and SEC softball is back. This is what you live for. This is why you play the game. Weekends like this, Friday night, opening up SEC play. Juices are high, adrenaline's high, but these players are starting to settle in nicely. And for Coach Traxel and her squad, looking to get the bats going here in the top of the fourth. Going against the Tennessee Ace and Ashley Rogers. 2 3 4 due up in this Ole Miss Rebels lineup. And Michaela Alley will step in for Ole Miss, one of the better hitters on this squad. As that one away, it leads this team in that batting average. Came in batting 404 on the season. Now down just a tick to 397. And Joe, what do you tell your squad? Down four nothing. You come up with the meteor lineup coming up. What do you do against Ashley Rogers? That one fouled straight back at one and two. String them together. Right now, hitters absolutely have to find a way to make contact first and foremost, and then find a way to get on. Whether that's, that's bunting, whether that's poking something through the infield or hitting something deep to the outfield, hitters right now have to be able to make adjustments from their previous at-bat of Rodgers. What did they strike out on? What got them off their guard or the first at-bat? Make that adjustment. I went outside to Alley. Mentioned this, her 218th consecutive game starting for Ole Miss. A big bat to have if you're Jamie Traxel. Appreciate the head coach taking some time out for us here on opening day. As Rogers deals the 2-2, that one is called. 
called strike three. Ashley Rogers, have Ashley yourself an Rogers afternoon. Big 14 in orange for Tennessee. Rogers comes in with the and off Rogers speed for strike three. Fight. This ball just dies. And Allie unable to hold off or pull the trigger. Her timing was off. And that's what happens when Rogers pitches in the mid to high 60s and then comes in 10 miles per hour, 15 miles per hour slower with that changeup. Joe, what a filthy pitch for strikeout number five for Ashley Rogers. Dilling here to begin her SEC play in her fifth season on Rocky Top. It's great just to see Rogers back and healthy. We talked about it kind of off air a little bit today. She, you know, she had those injuries early on back in the 2020 campaign, and then also the back injury early on in the Clearwater Invitational last year. But a healthy Ashley Rogers is as dangerous as you'll get across the SEC. Rogers only pitched 23% of the team's innings last year, a majority in the back end. Now coming back full strength, and Coach Weekly is making sure she's also monitoring. Rogers and her workload as well. Coach Weekly saying that they're making sure they give her enough rest in between outings and you won't see her maybe pitch back to back games as much as she did previously in her career. Those are a couple crazy numbers on the top line of that graphic for you. She's this is now her fifth season and she pitches at a 162 clip and she gets strikeout number six on the Ashley afternoon. Rogers. Ashley Rogers, two strikeouts here in the fourth. Rogers this time punches that outside corner with the curveball. A beautiful pitch and a different eye level from her rise ball as well as that changeup. That's why she's such a difficult pitcher to hit. She changes those eye levels and those speeds. That's a second straight looking strikeout too. Got to give credit to Cut Soyanopoulos there behind the plate. Might have creeped that pitch back <laughs> in, framing it for she Rogers. Received that very well back there. The, the left-handed catcher, the the uh, the catcher that had never played that spot before, before this year and joining the Tennessee Lady Vols. That one comes in. It's great to see Katsoanopoulos in orange for Tennessee again, coming over from Arizona last season. And I love that story from Karen as we've touched on already. Never caught in her life the athleticism from the young lady behind the plate able to show off behind the plate as well. And coach Weekly also gave a lot of credit to their assistant coach, Kate Malvo. She was a catcher in, in college, has worked with Katsoyanopoulos predominantly this season, working on her framing, her mechanics, her footwork. But as Coach Weekly told us, Katsoyanopoulos, just an athletic, raw player, is able to adapt so well. Smith gets under that one, and it will stay on the infield dirt. Donahue is there quickly, a one, two, three inning for the Lady Volunteers, up four to nothing. The Seven Innings Podcast is back in full swing this week. The crew will be recapping the Judy Garman Classic, tackling pitching in the SEC, and asking the question, are games too long? Find this episode on the ESPN app or wherever you get your podcast. And Jill, I'll be very curious to see how they tackle pitching in the SEC. As it's great to see Lair Butte back in the bullpen for Tennessee. Good to see her back up looking good. Zach, I actually just listened to that podcast on the drive up here. And they, they tackle a bunch of different issues, but they also give a shout out to Tennessee's pitching staff and what they've been able to do so far this year with that .58 ERA. You know, one comes in, that one is launched out to left field. Goodbye, home run, Zeta Pooney with an absolute monster shot out to left. When it comes to facing a power hitter like Zeta Puni, you have to be careful when you pick come inside to those hitters. Puni jumps on this inside pitch, gets her hands all the way in the zone and that barrel around quickly. Watch her hand pat. Those hands go right to that ball and her barrel follows through. She's able to get more power behind that swing because of it. And she makes Cleather miss pay for that inside pitch. Fourth home run of the season. 
for Zeta Pooney. Second on the team last season in home runs. The mommy hat comes out there <laughs> celebrating in that dugout as the second home run and a second long shot for Tennessee here tonight. The mommy hat, I love that. You, you started seeing that trend in football, the turnover chain, the turnover hammer, the or in baseball, the, the turnover, um, the home run coat for, for the Tennessee Vols. I love I love seeing the, uh, the mommy hat for the Lady Vols. Tennessee bringing out the mommy hat after Tennessee baseball brought out the daddy hat. And, and Jill, I don't know if you've seen it yet, but Tennessee baseball this season has another one, another new celebration. They got a lightsaber out oh, there I in the dugout that. at Lindsey Nelson Stadium. They must Stadium. be using the force this season. The force indeed. Tennessee forcing some home runs out of this park already today. It's been awesome to see the Lady Vols just power hitting. They didn't hit a home run on Wednesday night and a 19-0 win over Tennessee Tech, but a couple of long shots today and a 5-0 lead. And I think it speaks to how dynamic this offense is, how balanced this Tennessee offense is. You mentioned how their midweek game against Tennessee Tech, they didn't hit a ball out of the park today. A grand slam and a home run. They can get beat you in different ways, one through nine. That's what makes them such a tough lineup. You mentioned one through nine, the 409 hitter of Joya Katsoyanopoulos steps in in the seven hole spot. Katsoyanopoulos, we saw her with her first home run for Tennessee this past weekend. Katsoyanopoulos just gets this at the very end of her bat, her timing just a little bit off. That one is lined in, they call it a foul ball. Similar pitch to Kutsonopoulos there. Again, this is an outside pitch. She's a righty, so this is a curve ball coming off of the hand of Cleather Miss. She's doing a nice job, Cleather Miss, of extending that strike zone and, and making Kutsonopoulos chase a little bit. Right now, an adjustment needs to be made in the box. Kutsonopoulos needs to be able to get her bat towards that ball. Ooh. That one called strike three. Katsoyanopoulos is K'd up by McKenna Cleather Miss for out number one. And a big K there for Ole Miss and McKenna Cleather Miss. Cleather Miss goes outside for two pitches, comes inside tight to Katsoyanopoulos for strike three. A great example of how Cleather Miss is bouncing the ball both sides of the plate to keep these Tennessee hitters on their toes. Katsoyanopoulos came in with an on-base percentage of 500, so really big out there for out number one for Cleather Miss as Jamison Brockenbro steps in. One of my favorite last names I've ever heard. Brockenbro, pretty cool <laughs> last name for Jamison who comes in in the DH spot today, batting 318 for Karen Weekly squad. Brock and Bro, one of 10 freshmen on this Tennessee team this year. A lot of veterans, but also a yacht, lot of underclassmen. Brock and Bro, three-time All-State outfielder for Locust Grove there in the Peach State of Georgia. Also played on uh, played for Team Ireland back in 2022, the under-22 Women's European Softball Championship. Pretty cool to, to see her represent Ireland in that tournament. That one fouled sharply left side. Watch out, Karen Weekly. That's a, a lot <laughs> of wins out, over coach. there, Sandy. Coach smiling after that one. Not too much movement there. I'm sure that Coach Weekly has saw her fair share of line drives yeah. over that third base side. And it was cool getting to hear from, from Karen last week. She had mentioned, you know, I've got over a thousand wins, but Really in that rear view, you see Ralph, her husband, as that one is hit right side. Nice flash of the letter. Leather from the second baseman in Kamoku for out number two. Going with the softball and filling over to first. Tough play by Kamoku, but Brock and Bro pulls this inside pitch and Kamoku able to extend and have that backhand flip. That is such a tough flip to make as you're movement and your speed is going away from first base, but she was able to slow it down a bit and make that nice flip to first for the out. Kamoku, the sophomore, built a 9.49 a season ago from Friendswood, Texas. One of the better defensive players on this Ole Miss team. And as you mentioned, all that momentum working one way, you get the arm strength, throwing that back over to first for quickly the second out of the inning. 
And those are drills that every team practices on a day-to-day -day basis. Those backhand flips, the, the flip uh, tosses to second base, first base going in a completely different direction. You practice those every day, but the question is, can you transfer those skills to when it counts in the game? And Kamoku showing her skills at second base. Two gone here in the inning. The 9-0 spot and Katie Teal Taylor steps in. Taylor behind in the count to Cleethermis. Credit to Cleethermis after giving up the home run to Zeta Pooney. She then comes back, gets two straight outs, a, a strikeout looking, and then a nice ground ball for a second out. Taylor sees that one go upstairs. Tennessee will bring that hard lineup back to the plate after Taylor finishes up her A-B. Good luck there of the home run hitter and Zeta Pooney. As a 2-2 comes in for a ball at 3-2. And, and so a big pitch here upcoming. You don't want to flip that lineup back over here in the inning if you're old Miss. So Cleather Miss trying to set down Taylor here at the bottom part of the lineup. Donahue waiting on deck. The kids in orange. The 3-2 is lined straight up in the air. Hit a mile high in the sky. And calling off everyone is Paige Schmidt. Tennessee gets a solo shot from Zeta Pooney. Tennessee extends that lead to 5 0. You will get a full fill of softball. They are trophy hunting. This is a team that can beat you from the top of the order to the bottom. Look at this! Megan for Rainbow! Tiara Jennings Grand Slam! Oh, Casey! Come and play my game. Back here in Knoxville, and that trophy you just saw is what everyone is playing for here in 2023 to go to Oklahoma City, get that Women's College World Series appearance under your belt and win a national championship. Jill Nick and Tennessee might have the makings to do just that. When you sign on as a player at Tennessee, that's the goal, Zach, get to Oklahoma City. Tennessee has not appeared in a Women's College World Series in quite some time, looking to get back as you see, the seven-time Women's College World Series appearances haven't made one since 2015, but I guarantee if you ask anyone in that dugout, they have the goal of to get back to Oklahoma City and bring Knoxville their first national championship. And there's plenty of teams out in the country that have the ability to do so, but you definitely think Tennessee right up there with the likes of the Oklahoma, the UCLA, the Oklahoma States. The 2-1 is fouled off. And Tennessee's hump lately has not necessarily been getting to the Women's College World Series. Of course, that's the goal every year. But right now for Tennessee, it's getting over the regional hump. The last time that the Lady Vols moved on to the Super Regionals wasn't since 2019, before the pandemic. So they're trying to get back there. That one called strike three, throw down. We'll record the out, and Ashley Rogers with another huge K for Tennessee. Tally them up now for Rogers up to six, and make it, I believe, seven now on Next the contest up, for Rogers. Three, yep, seventh contest, seventh strikeout of the contest. And let's go back to talking a little bit about getting over that regional hump. Lost to Oregon State last year here in the Knoxville Regional. And, and really, Joe, what do you want to see Tennessee, what do they need to improve on between now and the time, maybe even that SEC tournament hits, what do they? What it needs to be different this season? The benefit for Tennessee is they play in one of the toughest conferences in the entire country. So if they tackle SEC play first, that will prepare them. They'll have valuable experience from playing these tough teams, such as Alabama, Ole Miss this weekend, of course, Arkansas, so many tough teams when it comes to the Southeastern Conference, the better and the quicker that Tennessee learns 
in their regular season, the more it will prepare them for regionals. Kamoku fouls that one away. And you mentioned it's a gauntlet to go through an SEC schedule. Nine of the 13 SEC teams are currently ranked inside that top 25. Also Arkansas, Alabama, they're also in that top 10 with Arkansas at seven, Alabama at nine, but Tennessee off to a hot start. The highest ranked team for Tennessee at number five in the SEC. You asked, how, how do you get past that regional hump? Well, before you can even think about moving on to the Supers, you have to first take care of the weekend series between your conference opponents. That starts right now, winning this game, but even take it even further, Winning this at bat, winning this pitch for Rogers. Rogers sees that one go upstairs. She's won quite a few already at bat so far tonight. Seven strikeouts for the ace and Ashley Rogers and a 3-2 count here to Kamoku. The 3-2 on its way. It is hit sky high left side and out of play. And Kamoku will lift to see another pitch. You see a little sneak peek out there in the top left of your screen, Carlin Pickens in the bullpen warming up for Tennessee. Rogers looking to get through inning number five. That one grounded left side, backhand by Donahue, fire over to first is in time. A nice play, it goes 6-3 on the putout. Donahue to Gibson for out number two. Excellent play by Donahue in that 5-6 hole and then getting rid of it quickly to get the out at one. She has to go to her backhand, but look at her footwork right there. She quickly moves her feet, gets her arm in throwing position and fires through. This is something that she's been working on with Coach Weekly, her overall footwork. She played outfield for the Sooners when she was at Oklahoma and was a two-time champion with them. But then when she came over to Tennessee, the Lady Vols needed a shortstop, and Donahue had played shortstop before in her travel ball days. And Coach Weekly knew she had the skill set, she had the athleticism. They're still working on her footwork and taking better angles to the ball. That's something they work on every day at practice. But overall, Coach Weekly really happy with her play at short. She took over for her Ivy Davis last year for Tennessee and, and Donahue, you mentioned two-time Women's College World Series champion, also a member of the all-tournament team back in 2021. Again, one of those three impact transfers that we've alluded to here on weekly staff. Again, they brought in Mackenzie Donahue as well as one of the better transfer pitchers in Peyton Gotchel. And then, oh yeah, Julia Ketsoyanopoulos comes into Knoxville as well. Good luck there of Gotchel. Curious to see where we'll see her this weekend, but we have seen Ashley Rogers, Rogers strike out eight Rogers. batters. She is through five with eight strikeouts for Tennessee. Back to Knoxville and Ashley Rogers, have yourself an afternoon. The graduate with eight strikeouts here on SEC opening day. And Jill, it has been fun to watch Rogers go to work. Rogers dealing in the circle, but also Tennessee's hitters getting it done at the plate. Kiki Malloy says, see you later to the Grand Slam. And Zeta Pooney showing off her power with the long ball. This well, is a Tennessee team that's it. red hot and love to make it rain. We'd have to get a tape measure shot for those two home runs from Pooney and from Malloy. And they really give a credit to a certain member of the coaching staff on this Tennessee coaching staff. Coach Chris Malvo, the hitting coach for Tennessee, has really transformed this offense when it comes to power. The grand slam for Kiki Malloy, the solo home run for Zeta Pooney today, showing off their power. And that's a very different aspect for them in terms of how much they've relied on this power hitting. Just last year, they hit 91 home runs as a team. The year before that, only a little over 60. So a huge difference in their power at the plate. As that one goes outside to Donahue. And hitting coach Chris Malvo, when he came in last year, he introduced a new hitting philosophy that 
really takes place with the lower body. He emphasizes getting that power in the lower body and using that to engage the rest of the swing and getting more power behind it. You see Donna, and you see there, sit back on her back foot, sees that one go by for a ball at two and two. You mentioned Tennessee, the power hitting has been huge from them today. Five runs scored all via the long ball for the big orange. As Donahue back to the top of the lineup, one, two, and three do up, and she'll foul that one off right side. Tennessee coming in with 22 home runs entering the day, so you can now add two more, 24, and that's actually roughly where they were this time last year. Tennessee with 27 home runs through her first 18 at bat games of the season. So roughly, we're seeing roughly that same power, that increase in power that was first introduced to them by Chris Malvo last year with the new hitting philosophy. And, and now Coach Weekly saying that she sees that carrying over even more as Coach Malvo continues to work with these hitters a second year. And you've got power all through this lineup as Donahue sees that one go outside. And it's so huge. We mentioned Tennessee trying to get back to a Super Regional, trying to get back to a Women's College World Series. You're able to pair that fantastic pitching with a power at bat in the lineup and a very balanced lineup, one through nine for Tennessee. Full count from Cleather Miss has fouled straight back. And I'll give both teams a lot of credit again. Opening day here in SEC softball, they have seen a lot of pitches in these at bats, really poised veteran hitting approaches for both sides. And Tennessee has seen three different pitchers today. Cleather Miss, the third arm for Ole Miss, so a lot of different looks for these Tennessee hitters. Ninth pitch of the A-B up, coming, and Cleather Miss gets strike three called. A swinging and missing Mackenzie Donahue for out number one in the fifth. Cleather Miss goes outside corner with the curveball, extends the strike zone, gets Donahue to swing and miss for strike three. Donahue liked where that was, just faded a little outside, and swings and misses for her first strikeout of the evening, and now the power out bat of Kiki Malloy steps in. She had a grand slam the last time we saw her in the box for Tennessee. Cleather Miss has done the scouting report. She knows the kind of power that comes with the bat of Kiki Malloy. She needs to hit her spots, focus in on her location, visualize that before the pitch, make it happen. Malloy with 11 home runs so far this season. And if you're Cleather Miss here, do you come right at her? down 2-0 with nobody on, or do you kind of be a little weary of Malloy in the box? The answer to that is pitchers always need to attack the hitters no matter what count it is. It comes down to that moving that ball and hitting that location. We'll see what Cleather Miss comes with on the 2-0, and she comes right at her with an off speed and a first strike to the at-bat. Kiki Malloy being in that two hole, she knows she's not always going to get great pitches in her at bat. Two one comes in outside at three and one for Malloy. And again, we mentioned 11 home runs now on the season for Malloy. She was at 10 before we even got to SEC play. So it'll be curious to see where nine and orange goes and how many blasts she can send out of the ballparks this year. Hitters count here for Malloy. Where will Cleather miss go with the 3-1? Right at her, and Malloy blasts that one out to right field. A no-doubter for Kiki Malloy, her second home run of the day. Cleather miss leaves this pitch on the outside part of the plate, a little too center, and Kiki Malloy makes her pay. She makes a veteran move, and Malloy goes with that outside pitch. She doesn't try to pull it. She meets the bit ball with the barrel on the same plane and lifts it over the right center fence. Look at her bat going all the way, extending to that outside part of the plate and letting her power take it oppo taco for the home run. Oppo taco, you mentioned the opposite field hitting. She hits a deep one out to left and the one that goes out to right field probably carries just as far for Kiki Malloy. Home run number 12, a dozen, and home runs are raining out of Sherry Parker Lee Stadium today. Kiki Malloy just having fun here in Knoxville today. And 
a big round of applause for who steps in for Tennessee now as Lair Boutte has re-entered the game. If you're just joining us, a scary one that came up and in on Boutte, but now back in and in that left-handed batter's box for Tennessee. Good to see Big Two and White back in that batter's box for the Lady Vols. That went down low, now 2-0 to Butte. Cleethram is the first time she's faced Butte so far today. The 2-0 incoming from Cleethermas and fires in a strike at 67. Now at 2-1 and one. and Jill, great to see Butte back in the in this box for Tennessee. Absolutely, anytime you see a, a player injured or hit by a pitch like Butte was, great to see him back, kind of maybe rub some dirt on it a little bit and, and come back into the lineup. It's a great thing to see. 2-1 in, hit left side, ranging to her left is the third baseman in Sykes and they rule that Smith stayed on the bag over at first, so out number two in the inning. 5-3 nice. on the putout. Nice play by Sykes. Goes to her glove hand side, gets her feet set before she makes that throw. Not an easy play, and it looks like Smith there was able to keep her foot on the extension. Throw a little off, but nice job by the first baseman gloving that ball. And that really is a tough throw for Sykes to make. We were talking about moving all the way in one direction, come back and throw kind of across your body, but a nice throw there to get Buche for out number two as Tennessee will bring the cleanup batter to the lineup. 0 for two today comes McKenna Gibson to the plate for the Lady Vols. Gibson striking out her previous two at bats, looking for her to make an adjustment here on her third time around. Gibson struck out on a change up her first time at the plate, then a rise ball her second time at the plate. So this is a critical moment for her, especially being in this four hole hitter, that cleanup spot. She needs to be able to make adjustments in game on the fly. So face the 0-2 here as that one goes away at one and two. And Tennessee needing to kind of string some hits together as well. You see the big six runs up on the board, but just three hits for Tennessee. They'd be poised at the plate <laughs> and hit whatever they can find. And oh yeah, all three hits are home runs. A one, two inside. That, that's where that power comes into play, right? That's being able to score runs with your power, whether it's that home run from Zeta Puni or Kiki Malloy or the Grand Slam. That, that power is huge part of this Tennessee offense, but it's not the entire story. This is a dynamic offense, very balanced. They can beat you in different ways. And Gibson stares at a strike three call, but Kiki Malloy going oppo taco on the blast out to right. The second home run of the evening for Malloy, and Tennessee's making it rain in Knoxville. The opening SEC series for Tennessee and Ole Miss. The Lady Vols with a 6-0 advantage and a lot on the shoulders in the right hand of Ashley Rogers. Jill Jelnick, she has a zero in a column not to be named <laughs> so far, and, and Rogers looking good here in her graduate season. She's dealing tonight, there's no question about it, and the question is, can these Ole Miss hitters catch up to her speed and her movement? That one in there for a strike, 0-1. This is the second time, excuse me, the third time through the lineup for these hitters. And second time for 891 right now as we see Brady at the plate. So can they make those adjustments on Rodgers? Brady squares to bunt. Rodgers will have to filter position and dropping the ball over at first is Butte. We'll see what they rule that on the infield. Looking like an infield hit, maybe. Or they give Rogers the error, and Great they job. do give Rogers the error. Great job from Brady putting, placing that bunt down in a difficult spot for Rogers. She has to pick that up quickly coming out of her motion, and that's never an easy thing to do for a pitcher. So Ole Miss, hey, any way you can get on, right? Just the second runner on for Ole Miss here in this contest, and 
Really a big inning they'll need here in the top of the six. Only six more outs to work with down six. And if you can get the nine hole spot and Jayla Lassiter on base, back to the top of the order and Whitley and, and Ole Miss is right back into it. Yeah, one is fouled straight back and Rogers gives up that error, but then she comes back quickly and gets ahead in the count 0 and two. Last time Lassiter was up at the plate, she fired an inside pitch to the left center gap that Malloy was able to track down for the out, but clearly has some power, especially coming inside. No doubt Ashley Rogers taking note of that and making sure she's hitting her spots here against Lassiter. Lassiter rolls over that one. Donahue to second, on to first, and does not get the quick Lassiter. So it is a fielder's choice for out number one here in inning number six. Donahue, a nice job of flipping the hips, getting over to second, getting the first out. Nice job by Donahue, getting her feet in front of that ball, making a nice throw. Lassiter, though, with her speed coming down the first baseline, able to beat out the throw and, and break off the double play, but still big out for Tennessee as Ole Miss still has one runner on. And a great job by Lair Boutte again. She was injured earlier on in the season. We saw her hit by a pitch tonight and taken out for a little bit. Great job there by her getting to second, fielding her position well, and that was able to get out number one. Again, Boutte, or yeah, excuse me, Lair Boutte making her debut on Wednesday night against Tennessee Tech. This just her, her second contest under her belt in 2023. Back to the top of the order for Ole Miss. And number 11, Tate Whitley. Whitley 0 for 2 today. She has been struck out twice by Ashley Rogers. And she swings and misses through that one at 1-1. One one. As a slapper, because your feet and your entire body is moving towards the pitcher's mound and you're trying to make contact at the same time it's imperative that she times up this ball she's had a hard time timing up rogers earlier in the game needs to make an adjustment here with her slap she squares and pulls back not wisely so and now it's one and two to tate whitley whitley again back to full strength for head coach in jamie traxel 191 career starts as a Rebel. And she'll line that one in the left field. Coming in and making the grab is Riley West for out number two. Rogers goes up in the zone, gets Whitley to bite on this mid-rise ball, and Whitley gets underneath it, pops it up for the easy out. It's not what you want to do as a slapper right now. Ole Miss trying to... They already have a table setter, so now trying to move Lassiter on first base into scoring position with two outs. And trying to do so will be the number two hole spot. It's number six, Michaela Alley. You see there 0 for 2 today, adding 390 on the season. Quick throw down to first. Cuts away in Opolis, and that'll be a, a nice throw for her, kind of trying to cut down runners over at first. Again, the left-handed catcher, you can get out of there quickly. Might be a little harder going to third, though being left-handed for Katsoyanopoulos. Ole Miss looking for their first hit in this contest, down six to nothing. Swinging and missing, throw down to second is not in time. It'll scoot into the outfield, and that is a stolen base for Jayla Lassiter. Not a lot of stolen bases on Katsoyanopoulos behind the plate, but Lassiter able to get a great jump at first base. Kutsoyanopoulos tries to get rid of it as quick as she can and throws behind the runner. Lassiter was almost at the bag by the time that ball was coming in. So now Ole Miss with a runner in scoring position for the first time tonight. Need to come up with a timely hitting now. Seventh stolen base of the year for Lassiter. That one is blooped into the infield dirt. And ranging to her left is Zeta Pumi. Tennessee will come to the bat in the bottom of the six. Up six nothing. The SEC Network always fun to see the the coaches mic'd up. And Jamie Traxel will be mocked up at some point in the show. She'll bring on a new pitcher and Grace Sparks 
Sparks is the number 11 pitcher in the class of 2023. And Jill Jelnick, what do you see from Sparks in the circle? Predominantly low in the zone. Sparks, a drop ball pitcher, so expect a lot of ground balls coming off bats. First pitch from him. Sparks is in there for a strike. Sparks will be low 60s, but then she'll also mix in a change, a rise, a screwball along with that drop ball. And she'll also be sure to, to bounce that ball on either side of the plate. So we're looking at different light eye levels as well. Sparks the fourth pitcher in for Ole Miss today as that one goes outside at one and one. Grace Sparks picked up her first win and her first collegiate win this past weekend, a win against Missouri State this past Saturday, an eight nothing win in five innings for Ole Miss. So trying to put up back-to-back -back efforts and, and look really good out here in her first action in the SEC. Again, fourth pitcher of the evening. If you're just joining us here on the SEC Network, ESPN app. Brooke Vestal got the ball in the circle to start as that one is rolled over, ranging to our left and making a nice strong throw to retire. Riley West is the second baseman and Kayla Kamoku for out number one in the inning. Nice job by Kamoku sticking with that play. Kind of popped out of her glove a little bit. Hard ball off the bat of West and Kamoku trying to get her feet around, able to still barehanded make the play at one for the out. Nice footwork there to hang with it. Grace Sparks gets her first out here in this sixth. Zeta Pooney steps back in and we flash you back to the fourth with a home run and a solo shot for Pooney over the left field scoreboard here at Lee Stadium. Pitch from Pooney is down low at 1 0. Pooney tied for first last season on this squad in RBIs at 53. You see there, she's already got 20 this season. Also second on the team last year in home runs at 14. And she blasted number four out of Lee Stadium. A tape measure shot out to left back in the fourth. Tennessee still three hits, three home runs, six runs. Just another day at the office for this Tennessee offense. Sparks a drop ball pitcher. You'll see as a hitter, her drop ball come in and it looks like it's it's coming in on plane and then right before that plate, it will drop off several inches. In order to hit that, you gotta move up in the box, hit it before it drops. And so one in from Sparks goes outside at three and one. And that's just game one here in this Tennessee Ole Miss series to begin SEC play. We will also have game two for you tomorrow night right here on the SEC Network Plus, 1.30 in the afternoon between the Rebels and Tennessee. That one, a hot shot over to first and a nice hot shot grab by the first baseman and Paige Smith quickly for out number two. A lot of barreled up balls so far for Tennessee in this one. That's what you can expect when you have a drop ball pitcher like Grace Sparks in the circle. That one hit off the end of Pooney's back, but she did have a lot of power behind it. Smith with a nice grab at one. Again, when you're seeing a lot of different pitchers in the circle, the defense for Ole Miss has to know, okay, who's in the circle now? What does she pitch and what am I expecting off the bat? Joya Katsuanopoulos steps in to take her third cut of the evening. 0 for 1 tonight, walked back in the third and struck out looking in inning number four, trying to keep that batting average over that lucky number of 400. That one swung on and missed and quickly behind in the count goes 27 and orange at 0 and 2. Katsoyanopoulos, she's one of four hitters coming into today with a batting average over 400. Eight Lady Vols hitting over 300. It just shows you how difficult this offense is to pitch to. That one outside. You mentioned this really potent Tennessee offense. Came in today averaging 371 as a team. And I feel like I keep coming back around to it when you pair that with pitching. Another really huge opportunity for Kiki Malloy and her team as Joya Katsuanopoulos cuts through that one and a strike three called. We will move to the top of the seventh. Ashley Rogers with a no-hitter intact. Three away from a no-hitter 
for Tennessee. Back in SEC opening weekend, and Ashley Rogers has given up no hits through six innings. She will face three, four, and five in the lineup. And Joe, what have you seen from Rogers so far with no hits given up today? A lot of movement from Rogers, whether it's up in the zone with the rice ball or cutting that corner with the curve. She's getting hitters to swing and miss. She's taking care of business in the circle so far. Savannah Sykes due up first, looking to break up the no-hitter so far tonight for the ace for Tennessee. Giving up 93 pitches so far tonight, eight strikeouts just to one walk. That's a nice strikeout to walk ratio through six innings for Rodgers. That went upstairs to Syke, quickly 2-0. Tennessee fans are loving it. Out in the stands tonight. Good to be back at Lee Stadium for all the folks here on Rocky Top. A little chilly evening with a little light breeze out to right center field. A lot of fans cozied up with big jackets and for the Lady Vols Locos, they had that big, that hair piece. I wonder if that's keeping their head warm. The thing one and, and thing two they wear <laughs> up there for the Locos as that one's in for a strike at three and one. And oh yeah, that, was, that nice slick haircut. And yeah, those, that looks like it's keeping them warm, right? Of course, yes. Of course yes. it is, their ears at least, yeah. And they're moving around up there and thing one and thing two, you see them up there just to our right here at least Stadium. The three one is in for a walk. Second base on balls given up by Ashley Rogers and Ole Miss has a little something working here in the seventh. Last chance for Ole Miss to get something going. String hits together. They now have a runner on base thanks to the, the walk drawn by Savannah so Sykes. Nine, so now the goal for nine. Ole Miss, get her over however you can, whether it's a bunt, whether it's a hit, you gotta be able to make contact and it comes down to barreling up Ashley Rogers right now. That's been the, the struggle for Rebels today. Paige Smith will try to move over Sykes and she swings and misses at that one at 0-1. Smith so far today, 0 for 2 on that line. Comes in in that cleanup spot, batting 197, looking for a little rally here in the seventh for the Lady Rebels. Here's the rally caps. This is the third time around that these hitters are seeing Roger Smith popped up her previous two at bats to both third base and shortstop. So that left side of the field, she needs to be able to make that adjustment on Roger's timing and be on plane with her ball. Smith will see the 1-1 one, one in. Ground that one left side. Donahue backhand. Fire over to first. It's in time. A tailor-made double play for the Tennessee defense. Donahue gets it over to Bouche and to Gibson for the double play for the Lady Vols. Textbook double play by the Lady Vols infield. Donahue backhand the quick throw and then Boutte finishing it off on the back end. This is why those two veterans right now are your middle infielders. Plays like that in big moments such as the top of the seventh and now Rogers and the Lady Vols defense with two outs, just one more out away from their first SEC win of the season. And on pitch 101, Rogers sees that one in for a strike. Two strikes away and one out away from a no hitter for Ashley Rogers here on opening night in the SEC. It just means more here in the SEC and Rogers trying to get it done. Now one strike away from a no hitter. That's that mid-level rise that looks so good to hitters. It's not super high out of the zone. It's hittable, but the, the hitter right now, Ray, she needs to be able to meet that on the same plane, keep her hands back and stay high. The 0-2 from Rogers, swung on and missed, strike three. And Ashley Rogers throws a no hitter to begin the SEC slate. Nine strikeouts from Rogers as she gets strikeout number nine and a no hitter here on Rocky Top. 
Here is strikeout number nine and Jill Jelnick. What did you see from the Tennessee ace today in a no-hit bit? Rogers was doing what she does best. She throws that rise ball high and with a lot of velocity. The Ole Miss hitters were never able to catch up to that rise and kept biting at it. Rogers took advantage and her offense today also backed her up on the plate. Tennessee's offense got it done with the long ball. Grand slam from Kiki Malloy and a Zeta Pooney home run for the big runs of the day. This is a Tennessee team that is rolling right now. Both phases of the game and they kick off SEC play with a big 6-0 win. Tennessee extends their winning streak now up to 12 and the Lady Vols get a no-hit bid from Ashley Rogers in the process. Also a couple long balls from Kiki Malloy here tonight. Tennessee improves to 18 and one overall. They start off the SEC conference slate with a 1-0 record. And for everyone on our SEC network crew, our producer Allison Paris, our director Carter Mills, and for Jill Jelnick, I am Zach Nelson saying so long here from Knoxville, Tennessee with a 6-0 win over Ole Miss.